everyone and welcome to Goodroots Guides. This one is about Azul on Tabletop Simulator. If you're joining my stream for board game night, you may see us playing Azul and want to join in as the third or fourth player depending on how many we already have in the set rotation. Typically, it will be myself, Shin, and Mel, and we have room for a fourth. First, whenever you come into the game, you're going to see a screen that looks like this. As the host, I'm going to change my color to sit at the table. So you click up in the top right and then you grab a seat. So I'm going to grab a seat here at this teal kind of color. Now I'm going to inform Mel to also grab a seat. You can type into the lower chat to talk here or you can type in the stream. So Mel has chosen her color is red. Now to control tabletop simulator, you should probably follow the tutorial if you haven't already. But let's get to Azul. So first, let's take a look at what options we have. I could change the tiles, change the kind of game, any of those kinds of special attachments here. But what we're going to do is just go for a basic game. If you need a refresher on the rules, you can come here to look and flip the pages. Although this is a very simple game, the probably the most complicated part of it is the scoring. So before we begin, let's take a look at the boards. First, Let's distribute all the tiles, the setup, and our individual boards. So this can be a little bit confusing to look at, but if you check out the bottom of your board, it means that if you get a horizontal row stacked, you'll get plus two points on top of the tiles you've placed. A vertical stack is plus seven, and this one is a little bit confusing, but it means if you get one of each color, then you'll get an additional 10 points. The goal here is to fill this up in a most advantageous way for yourself to get the highest score. You do this by pulling tiles off of the center mat. In this case, according to the chat, I go first. This game is kind of like dominoes in regards to taking tiles and giving tiles back. So the first thing we do is I'm going to pull a tile. Now I of course want to build something vertical. If you build horizontal, Whenever a person is about to complete a horizontal, the game is almost over. So typically it's smart to start with the verticals. Most characters like to go with something like this. This is three. Three reds and one black. If you take the red, the black will go to the center. And the center part, this one tile, will come down to your negative deduction score if you pull from the center. It'll make more sense as you see Mel and I play. So to begin, I'm going to take this three red. Now it's Mel's turn. The black went to the center and the one tile has remained. Mel's hand you can see moving as she kind of peruses through the different tiles. I'm going for this one here. This vertical has the red and this red tile, since this is row is complete, will move over to the far edge and fill up this red. The rest of them will be discarded for the future. Let's let Mel know she can go ahead and choose. All right, so Mel chose a blue to put. She looks like she's also going for that vertical on the far side, so we may have a bit of a competition. Now you'll notice that the rest of the tiles went here into the center. If I choose one of these, then that one tile will go down here. That's also true for any extra tiles at the end of your turn. I'm going to take this two black just to fill up and try to make this vertical row. At the end of these tiles being pulled, once every tile is decided on, the round will end, the scoring will start, and we'll get a new round. So Mel decided to take those three yellow tiles in the center. Because she did that, she also gets the punishment one tile. At this point, anybody can take anything from the center and not be punished for it, which is pretty cool. I'm going to take this teal tile and start this long row. Alright, so now here's something interesting. There's only three blue tiles left on the field. However, on my board, the one on the blues takes five. So what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to take these two blue tiles and just get it started. If a row cannot be completed, by the end of the round, the remaining tiles will shift over into the new round. We're just about done with this first set. And the last one is a black, and since the only place I have for it is here or in the punishment, I'll just put it here. Now the scoring begins automatically. It's moved all of my tiles that could be moved over to this vertical row. Now it says it's Mel's turn. It's important to pay attention so the flow of the game stays steady. 
Mel will pick up her first tiles. She's going with yellow. She did the same thing I did, trying to complete a row on the bottom. Smart move, Mel. All right, let's see what we can do here. So I need a yellow, but I also need to get rid of this black row I have here. So I'm going to start with the blue, and I'm going to drop it down, see if we can complete the bottom row. Mel's completed her bottom right there, and I'm going to take this last blue, and I think we're going to be in a fight over who's going to have to pull from the middle first. Is she going to do it, or am I? Mm, she's thinking about it. She's wondering. Looks like it's going to have to be me, which is perfectly fine. Now what happens if I want to fill this, but there's four here, and there's only three spaces left? Well, I'm not only going to take the one tile, but this additional tile goes onto the next space to deduct another point. Not something I'm really looking forward to, frankly. So... I don't have a lot of good choices. I think I'm going to go with a blue up here. And she's going to complete that row. I could have taken that from her, but I chose not to. You know what? Now that that one tile's gone, I'll go ahead and take the extra black. Just for fun. I have the one and another negative one there. Careful not to fill this up too high, because it gets all the way to negative three. And with this, I have no place to put it but here, so now I've stacked down to negative two. The scoring begins automatically. Everything makes its count. It deducts my points. And right now, Mel's in the lead with ten points, and I have seven. Now it's back to my turn. All right, what do we have? Not a lot of options here for me. But, what the heck. We'll go with the reds and start our bottom row. It's possible I could do the second one with not a real big deal. Keep in mind, I'm showing you this with the little hand cursor because I'm showing you how to play the game. It's a good idea to keep your cards close to your chest, because right now, just like we can see Mel's hand, she can see mine. So don't give away your strategy too soon. It could come back to bite you. Let's put this three here. Hmm, what is she doing? I'm going to put a one up here. And I'll just take this three and drop it down here. I don't have much of a choice. So the game progresses much this way until somebody is about to complete a horizontal row. Once we're one turn away from that, the game will say this may be the last round. If somebody completes a horizontal row, it is the last round and the scoring is final. So that's a basic introduction on how to play Azul. Please feel free to come by anytime on board game night, and if you see us playing Azul, hit exclamation point join in the chat to join in on the queue, and we'll try to get you in for a fun little game. Be part of the rotation, be part of the game. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you soon. Take care.